This is the hybrid Clouser minnow. Um, Clouser minnows are pretty much like the streamer pattern, using them in lakes, rivers, for trout, saltwater species. When it comes to tying clousers, you can use all sorts of different materials. The classic is just the two-tone bucktail, like this guy here. Lighter color on bottom, darker color on top, crystal flash down the middle. What's good about this one is it's very sparse, doesn't hold on to any water. The stiff fibers of the bucktail hold a really solid um, profile, even when fished quickly at high speeds. One of the drawbacks of bucktail is it's, it can be a little tough to tie in, can give you a bulky head, be a little tough to manage. Um, also, when fishing it in slower, clearer water, um, it kind of lacks the movement as some more flowy fibers such as marabou or craft fur. So another common way to tie this is just using craft fur for the top and bottom. You can see these fibers move around quite a bit more. They're really light, flowy. They'll undulate more. Um, they will hold on to a little bit more water, but they are synthetic, so they'll shed that water pretty quickly. Um, pros of this pattern, very easy to tie in. You can see there's very minimal bulk on the head for how much fiber I'm getting in there. Some drawbacks, um, fished at high speeds or in fast flowing water, the profile tends to collapse a little bit. Also for this top layer, not so much the bottom layer, this top layer, it can get fouled around the hook pretty often. Um, it's not a huge deal. You can just, every few casts or so, or whenever it gets fouled, just pull it all forward, split it down the middle, put it down each side, brush it back, and you're good to go. But you tend to not really have that problem with bucktail much. The fibers are so stiff that they stay split down the middle pretty much the whole time. So that's really my inspiration behind doing the hybrid um, clouser. It's much less tie-in bulk since it's only half bucktail and then the other half is synthetic craft fur. You get the flowy undulations of the craft fur underneath with the stiff bucktail on top preventing the foul fouling around the hook and also holding that nice wide beefy profile while keeping the um, material bulk to a minimum. So let's get started. So in the vise, this is a Gamakatsu B10S stinger hook in a one aught. You can time as big as two aught, three aught. Um, this is a good all around size. I've got a trip coming up to Costa Rica where we may be targeting some rooster fish as well as some amber jacks. So I feel like this is gonna encompass all those sizes pretty well. Another route you could go is a size six or a size four. Um, saltwater hook, just these stainless steel hooks that you see pretty often. Um, that's what I tied this guy on. It's a great size for trout as well. Now for thread, you do want something kind of bulky. Um, a lot of people like flat waxed nylon thread. Um, that can be nice. It can help you get materials on the hook a little better without slipping around. Um, I've just got this 140 denier ultra thread in white. It does a good job it flattens out well and it cords up to make a nice strong thread. It stays pretty translucent, so it really helps those colors shine through. For the eyes, you got just your classic lead dumbbell eyes. Um, size large or size extra large for a hook like this is going to be just about right. I'm going to go with a size extra large on this and I'm going to tie this one with a tan underbody. Um, tan craft fur, and then a black bucktail back. Um, one tip, when you're putting on your thread, if you're always sick of trimming the excess, just pull a little bit out, pinch it down on the hook with your thumb, start wrapping, and before you know it, you've got that tag end covered up. You don't have to come in and snip that with your scissors. Just reduces that extra step. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Okay, I'm just building up some bulk here. 
um, to make a nice little landing pad to hold these eyes. The thread helps it stop from spinning around and also by increasing the diameter of the hook here, um, it helps get those eyes centered better. I'm gonna leave plenty of room in front of my eyes here um, for tying down my materials. I just set my eyes on there like that. I'll do eight to 10 wraps one way. Not really worrying too much about where they are or about the twisting right now. Then I'll do eight to 10 wraps the other way. You'll see these wraps will kind of make them sit more perpendicular. I'm gonna tighten my vise a little bit. Okay, then I just, I kind of come look at it sideways, make sure these are nice and flat. Then I'm gonna come in and add some super glue. With this fly, I go crazy with the super glue. Okay, and then I like to put some wraps over top of it again. The other way. Okay, now if you spin your bobbin clockwise, so as you're looking down at it, it's now spinning clockwise, this is gonna twist up that thread, cord it up, make it a smaller diameter, and also make it quite a bit stronger. And that's what I do before I do these helicopter wraps, which, let's see if you can see this here. See, I'm just going around the eyes, and these wraps are cinching down all those crisscross figure eight wraps that I put in, just pulling everything tight. And when this thread is corded up like this, I'm not worried about really cranking down. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm just gonna come down the hook shank a little bit. I don't need to come down too far. I'm not actually gonna bring my materials back very far. Okay, then I'm gonna come to the front. Just lay down a base of thread all the way up. That's gonna help when you're tying down the craft fur right now. Okay, so the craft fur, it comes in these, these are about five by five squares, a lot like what you would expect with some deer hair or bucktail or something like that. Um, you always hear fly tires talking about, I don't know, they'll get like a 12 by 12 square and they'll say, this is enough to last you a lifetime. Um, that's not true. There's so much under fur in these that it takes a very large surface area to get the amount of fur you need. Um, for example, here's my white that I bought just a few days ago. This is tied maybe, I don't know, eight to 10 flies and it's almost gone. So I just keep that in mind when getting craft fur. Another thing about craft fur or synthetic materials in general is they can be pretty tough on your tying scissors. So I like to get another pair of less expensive um, scissors. These ones are actually, you can sharpen them, so I'm not too worried about them. Um, and I'll just start pulling those fibers back with the tips of my scissors to get them to stand up until I get a nice big clump. Then I'll stand all those fibers up, get a hold of them with my hand and just start cutting it off close to the hide, or what would be the hide if this was natural fur. Okay, this is what I mean by all, all that under fur. Um, you don't have to worry about keeping the tips aligned. It's good that they're not aligned. You can see it's very thin out here, very thick out here towards the back. So you're gonna to want to want you're gonna to want to have some sort of comb to brush those out. Um, some people swear by flea combs or other things like that. Just a fine tooth comb has been working great for me. I'll just start picking out. This makes great dubbing, so you can use it later on. Put it somewhere where you can use it. Again, picking it out. You basically want these long guard hairs. This is what's gonna give us the most movement in this fly. 
Okay, this is a good healthy clump. Um, I want these fibers as long as possible, so I'm just gonna square up these ends and tie it off. If you were going for a certain length, you'd just wanna measure it on your fly and then transfer that measurement and then tie it in. Um, you can wet these ends, can make it a little easier to cut. Okay, so you got a nice square end there. Now we're gonna spin the thread counterclockwise this time and that does uncord the thread, flattens it out, but also it does something interesting when you go to make a wrap and then you let go, it makes that thread jump, jump rearwards. I don't know if you can see that when I take the tension off, that thread will tend to, let me try it a little bit better take the tension off that thread will actually lean back and so that's going to help me grab the very rear end of these just hold it like that at a little bit of an angle up to the top go all the way around let's try that again and go forward a little bit there we go Okay, before I cinch that down, now I'm gonna come to the back, go over, a couple loose wraps, and then start to tighten down. I'm always constantly kind of changing um, the characteristic of my thread, cording it up or flattening out, depending on if I want to gather materials and tie them down to the hook versus really crank down on materials with some strong thread tension. Okay, I'm just gonna loosely cover these up for now. Don't need to do anything yet, really. Okay, so that's already looking really good on the bottom. That's gonna look awesome with a black layer on top. Um, now we're gonna add our flash. For that, just crystal flash. Um, ideally, you have a wide array of colors for this, but if you're only gonna have one, just the, the midge or the, the pearl shade, it's gonna work for everything. I really don't think it's gonna to make too much of a difference what color your flash is. It's just there to kind of mimic the lateral line or the scales of the bait fish. Bait fish use light as a way to communicate. You see those big bait balls swimming around and they'll uh, all move as one group and they use their the shine on their scales to kind of signal those turns and movements to each other. Um, I'm gonna be a little bit more liberal with my flash than I usually am. A saltwater fisherman swear by flash. If this was for trout, I might go a little bit more low key with that flash. Okay, so that's like eight to 10 strands. And I'm gonna tie it down both sides. So I'm gonna do the far side away from me first. Again, these gathering wraps makes it a lot easier if you go counterclockwise and then it will jump rearward. After I've done a couple, I'll pull it in tight. And then come back around and just do a couple wraps there. Okay, same thing on the other side now. Try to keep your amount of flash on each, each side pretty equal, but don't get too caught up by it. Just grab, just grab a clump and go. Okay, I'm just gonna put down a fresh layer of thread here, getting ready for my um, my bucktail. This slippery thread can sometimes make it tough to get your bucktail down. If I experience any issues like that, I'll put down a thin layer of super glue, then put the bucktail on it, um, and then come tie it in. Okay, so here's my black bucktail. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but some of these fibers are like wavy. 
and I really like those fibers, but I'm going to go for the longest ones I can find here to match the length of the tail. So I'm just going to pull out a clump. You can always go bigger than you think you may need with your clump and then weed it out, thin it out after the fact. Okay, same process as the craft fur. I'm gonna grab the long tips and just kind of tease out any shorter fibers that are gonna create unnecessary bulk, make it tougher to tie in. And that's still quite a bit thicker than I want. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come out to the even longer fibers, exposing some shorter ones, pinch hard, and then I can tease out more and I'll just keep repeating that step until I get the diameter I want. Okay, so I'm gonna compare this to the length of my craft fur. So that's perfect. I'm just gonna square up these ends and then it'll be just the right length. Clockwise spin. Okay. Gathering wrap, second gathering wrap. Now I'm going to spin clockwise. This time I can really crank down. The head's gonna come all the way back to the eyes. Your thread will want to slide off for a little bit, but that's okay as you keep making, or as you keep adding bulk to the head, that will kind of lessen. Okay, then I'm just gonna whip fish, whip finish right at the end there. I'm gonna go nuts with the super glue here so the your whip finish isn't super crucial. I still do like to do two sets. Snip your thread. Put even amounts of bucktail down each side. I just kind of like to separate that side. Then separate that side. It's looking pretty good. Okay, now for the glue. Really going to soak it into the head here. Down into these thread wraps there. Of course, on the nose there. I like to get the glue to go up on the bucktail a little bit and soak into the head there. Okay, then we're just gonna let it dry. I'll keep turning it for the first little bit to make sure it doesn't all run down to one end. So there you have it, there is the hybrid clouser.